A two-month-old infant has a small pit on the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle with mucus dripping intermittently from its opening. The pit extended to the tonsillar sinus as a pharyngeal fistula. Which embryonic structure or structures is or are involved in this anomaly? We're looking for the persistence of the second pharyngeal pouch and the proximal part of the second pharyngeal groove. They should be obliterated, but they're not obliterated in this case. And what you end up with is a combination of a pharyngeal cleft of two that's persistent all the way into that little purple area, which is a pharyngeal pouch. And that little purple area is going to be where the pharyngeal tonsil will sit in the oral cavity. And any fluids that can leak through there will leak out into the neck area. Typically, areas two and three of the pharyngeal clefts gets obliterated during formation as the lateral walls of the neck overgrow each other and fuse. Um, the more important of the pharyngeal pouches and pharyngeal clefts are going to be number one, because those will form the external auditory canal and the internal auditory canal, or the eustachian tube. So there's going to be a small membrane, which would be the tympanic membrane, that would persist as a membrane between these two um, pouches and clefts. That tubotympanic recess will be an invagination from the inside, and the external auditory meatus will be an invagination from the outside. In the second crypt or pouch, you can see that the tonsillar sinus would be developing here. And if it obliterates the pharyngeal clefts on the lateral side, uh, this should just be a small area for the palatine tonsil. Now in the third pharyngeal pouch, the thymus and the inferior thyroids will develop. Now the thymus is going to migrate down into the superior mediastinum and it drags down those inferior parathyroids. That can be a tested item in that the inferior parathyroids can be all over the place in tracked with that thymus as it migrates. And even though they start superiorly, they will get dragged down to be inferior, which is why even though they're in the third arch, they are inferior parathyroids. The fourth arch has a parathyroid associated with it as well, but because it's anchored there and doesn't uh, migrate as much, then it will be um, less associated with any loss of position in the adult form. There will also be the C cells of the thyroid, which will be coming from the ultimal branchial body, um, which is going to be neural crest cell derivatives coming from the fourth uh, arch.